Hi. In this Quicksoft tutorial, we will cover how to extract primitives. I will load in the basic part example file. The first thing we want to do is to align our mesh to the 3D space. This helps us easily define sketches and makes mirroring geometries simple. For this mesh, I want the z-axis to pass through the center of this cylinder and the x-axis to be against this flat surface. For this purpose, we need to be able to create primitives, which we can use to align our meshes with. To extract our primitives, go to the main toolbar and select Extract Primitives. If we start with a simple flat surface like this one, the most efficient way to extract the plane from it is to use the Magic Wand tool. We can click on the part of the mesh that we want to extract and change the angle tolerance slider until it starts to cover the entire section. If you want, you can select on another section so it covers more area. Once your area is selected, simply click on the type of geometry you want to extract and Quick Surface will automatically find the best fit. You can click Create and Stay. For the next process, we will make a cylinder. Again, I'll use the magic wand tool, select over my curved area, and I'll click on the cylinder geometry this time. As you can see, a cylinder was created. For more complex shapes or harder to reach areas, you may want to use the freehand tool. Now that we have some primitives created, we can use the deviation analysis tool to see how much noise and deviation the mesh has. We do this by clicking on the analysis tool. Using the deviation map, we can spot if there are any inaccuracies. For example, if there is any tilt, it is wise to add some constraints onto the primitive, such as making two primitives parallel or coincident. If we look at our two primitives, They've both been fit to the mesh. However, when machined, they most likely need to be perfectly perpendicular, not only locked to the mesh. However, for the sake of simplicity, I will keep them unconstrained. More details on constraints can be found in another tutorial. The next step I want to take is to look into the selection techniques in more detail. If I delete the two primitives I made just now, and again open up Extract Primitives, we can look at the different selection types. The main one, the Magic Wand, is the most useful. It has adjustability to the curvature, is fast, and is very simple to use. However, for many cases, the handheld paintbrush, rectangle, and pen tools can also be useful, such as for parts with lots of noise but small curvature. The final two are the expand and shrink. They can expand selections to include neighboring triangles or shrink selections for more precision, for example, by using this button to shrink the selected area or this button to enlarge your selected area. Another feature useful for extracting primitives is to isolate part of your mesh. This hides part of your mesh that you don't need and makes extracting areas on a mesh easier to select. To finalize this tutorial, I'll open a project with many different primitives and work through it. I'll start with a sphere here. So, I'll go to Extract Primitives, use the Magic Wand tool, and select over it. Then, I'll just click the Sphere button. As you can see, if we use the Analysis tool, we created it quite well. I'll click Create and Stay, and go onto the cylinder. Again, with the Magic Wand tool, 
I select over it, click on the cylinder button, check for its accuracy, and click Create instead. For the cone, I'll use this button so I can select through it and use the freehand tools to select over the cone. Now, I'll click the cone and as you can see the software has automatically analyzed it for me and I think it's very good. So I'll click create. Now, our three primitives have been created. With this, you have learned how to successfully extract primitives. For more on editing primitives and aligning objects, check out our other tutorials. Thank you for watching.